Now we're on the home stretch now, and I'm just going to talk about um, items seven and eight. So first of all, data presentation. So this has been a big issue in a lot of narrative synthesis that we've looked at, that the data is not very clearly presented. And so there's not transparency between the data that were synthesized and the conclusions of the synthesis. So this is why we've put in here one of the items that you should make sure you present your data and just sort of refer to how you've presented the data and how it relates to the synthesis. So when you're um, thinking about how you present your data, the things that you're interested to consider is to allow comparison of the studies in the relevant groupings um, and, and also order the studies or, um, and the grouping um, to promote transparency. So very often, particularly in Cochrane reviews, most of the data are presented in the characteristics of included studies tables, which are listed alphabetically. And but it's very difficult then as a reader to see um, where the data come for any particular comparison group, and also to compare studies within a comparison group for their key characteristics. So we would recommend that you think um, a bit more creatively about how you present the data. Um, and the data that you have for each group should then really be accompanied by key study characteristics that might affect the interpretation of the data. So for example, study design, risk of bias, maybe location if that's important and it varies a lot across the studies. Um, there's no um, precise prescription about exactly how you design your tables, um, but I think if you bear in mind these principles, um, you should end up with nice tables. So here we have an example, and um, this is not a Cochrane example, but um, the type of table that uh, Vary presented a bit earlier when for, um, presenting a lot of rich data about studies. Now these are very useful and they do in some ways promote transparency, but you could argue that actually by presenting so much data, it's kind of almost obfuscating or it's sort of not that transparent because it requires the reader to look through so much and it can overwhelm the reader with too much information. So although it looks as though it's transparent, it might not actually really promote transparency for the reader. So we would suggest that you think about more summary tables presenting the key elements of the data and the key characteristics of the studies. So this is an example um, of an effect direction um, plot where um, you can see there's a data from quite a number of studies, 17 studies included here. Um, we report the study, for each line is, what is one study, study design, risk of bias, the study size, the time point at which the outcome was assessed. And then we've got four different outcome domains here and indicating the overall effect direction, whether it was improved or worsened or not clear effect or no, um, that we reported on here. And you can also see in this plot where there was lots of gaps. So you can see quickly in these studies that um, the most common outcome was respiratory health. And we've also or ordered it here by the group of intervention. So there was two main comparison groupings here and then ordered by quality. So when you're looking at the data, you're looking at the best quality data up at the top. There are lots of different examples of, of or ways that you can present your data. And um, many of you will be very familiar with a forest plot, which presents a lot of complex data, but in a really clear and systematic way. Um, and most people would be very familiar with this. Um, although when you would first encounter forest plot, it might take you some time just to get your head around it. Um, but the other options are, as we've already discussed, the effect direction plot, harvest plot, which varies um, presented a bit, um, a box and whisker plot, if you're presenting sort of summary of effect estimates, um, a bubble plot, and there's another one um, developed by Julian Higgins, called the albatross plot if you're relying on p-values. So there's lots of different options here. Um, and finally, the last item, because Vary's already covered item nine, um, items eight from SWIM is reporting results. So this is, this is about how you present the narrative 
that sort of presents the, the, the findings of the studies and the, the synthesis. So this item says, for each comparison and outcome, provide a description of the synthesized findings and the certainty of the findings. And then it's saying you've described the result in language that's consistent with the question. So far, has already talked a bit about that and indicate which studies are contributing to that part of the synthesis. So I've just got an example text here. Oh no, we've not. This, this is, these are the sorts of things really that, that we mean but that should be included in this item. So reporting the findings in relation to the question that's addressed. So it might be about effect direction rather than effect size. Report the standardized metric that was used and the synthesis methods used, reference studies used, and then certainty of the, of the findings. And then if you've investigated heterogeneity, um, you would report what um, variation and explanation for the heterogeneity that you identified. So here's um, an example in, in a results section. Um, so this um, the highlighted text in green. Um, so it's saying in four well-conducted studies with direction of effect. So it's stating that this is about effect direction rather than effect size. And then it goes on to say um, that general health was better. And the synthesis method used was vote counting of direction of effect. And then it goes on to describe the results. Um, and we also, in, in this example, again, in the green text, um, it, oh, something's happened in the slide, but, um, so we're saying that we describe the findings in, with respect to the actual question that's being addressed. So it's very much sort of, hopefully very clear that it's about um, general health being better. So it's not about um, the effect size. Oh, now I can't. Oh. Oh. There we go. Yes. It's not working. Um, oh, great. Yes, it's fine. <laughs> then um, when refer we want to make sure that when um, that readers are really clear and it's really transparent, which studies are being referred to. So sometimes you see in a review, it will say nine studies assessed forever, and they'll reference the studies that are included in that comparison group. But then when they go on to talk about the results in more detail, they don't say which studies they're referring to. And I think we would like um, you to refer to the studies whenever you are referring to a specific group, because otherwise you wouldn't know which, you know, if we say in four well-conducted studies, if these were not referenced here, we wouldn't know which one they were, which ones they were. So we wouldn't know really where the greatest weight is um, being given to the evidence in the synthesis. So that's just about clear referencing. And then indicate the certainty, which um, Barry's already talked a bit about as well. So that's quite straightforward. Um, and then if you are able to or choose to look in a bit more detail, um, even in an exploratory way at variations in effects across the studies, um, then you can again just report this narratively. And so for example, in, in this example, there were a group of studies, but of the studies, two studies targeted people with poor health. And they found something different to studies from um, outside of New Zealand, where the studies were not targeting people with poor health. And the findings in these two groups of studies were different. And in, in that review, that was used to explain some of the heterogeneity in the reported effects. So that's... Um, has kind of gone through all the reporting items. Um, there's a lot more detail in the paper in the BMJ um, where there's a sort of detailed elaboration of what, what each item means and guidance on how you might in interpret it and apply it. And there are also examples um, um, for each item we've provided clinical and non-clinical examples of how the reporting might look. Um, should say that um, as we've already said, the, the work here links quite closely to six new Cochrane Handbook chapters, in particular chapter 12, but also um, other chapters, which is about sort of handling heterogeneous data and the making, making decisions about grouping for synthesis. Um, and uh, there's a lot of resources on the Cochrane website 
um, to support you when you're doing reviews that involve these kind of approaches. Um, we have also set up a SWIM network and a web page, and the link is here. Um, and we provide links to the recording of webinar one, and we will also provide a link to the recording for webinar two. That website also um, provides sort of an FAQ se session, a section, um, and also a sort of email network for discussion and learning. Um, there's also Cochrane have hosted um, an online training module for SWIM, um, which you'll be able to find. Um, and because the this uh, webinar is not at a time that's that convenient for everybody, we decided that we will offer a live, a second live FAQ session um, and we'll advertise that on that website. So if you're interested to keep in touch about SWIM activity, um, then do go to our website and sign up for the virtual email network. And we're delighted to hear from you.